In this video, we'll go over all of the common CSS units of measurement so that you'll know how and when to use them. There are actually 15 different units of measurement compatible with most browsers. These are broken into absolute sizes and relative sizes. So absolute is exactly how it sounds. It's a definite value. Relative sizes are relative to something. It could be relative to its parent, a font size, or other things. And we'll go over all of that in this video. Now I'm not going to go through every one of these. We're just going to cover the ones that you're going to use in real life. I wanted you to be aware of these different units, but we're only going to cover pixels as an absolute value. And the relative values we'll cover are REM, M, VW, VH, and percent. I'll go into the details of each as we go through them. So let's start with pixels. I have a basic HTML page here, and we have a div with the class of PX, and, and in the PX class we have a border defined so that we can see it. And let's add to this a width. And I'll just set it to 200 pixels. And we'll save that. So you'll see here that when we define a size in pixels, that is a set value. It will always be that value. We could also set the font size here, and we'll set that to 20 pixels. And that changes the font size to 20 pixels. It's pretty straightforward. We're going to leave that paragraph there for reference later on when comparing it to the relative values. So I'm going to highlight this, Alt, Shift, Down, Arrow, and duplicate it. And now we'll look at relative units. And so we'll start with the easiest one that, to understand, and that's the percent. All right, so I'll add another class here, percent. Let's go ahead and add that same border. And let's set the width of this to 50%. And we'll save that. Now you'll see here that the width becomes 50% of the width of its parent. And the parent of the percent div is the body. And then percentages can also be applied to font sizes. So we could say 50% on this as well. And that is going to reduce the font 50% of the default font size. In most browsers, the default font size is 16 pixels. And so this should make it 8 pixels. So if we right click here and inspect, we can look at the computed font size. And here we see the font size is 8 pixels. All right, let's move on to VW and VH. These stand for viewport width and viewport height. And these are very similar to percentage. So one VW is 1% of the viewport width. The difference between percent and VW is that percent is based on the available size of its parent. VW is based on the entire view width of the screen. So let's go ahead and create another paragraph here. I'll shift down arrow and we'll change this one to VW. And let's add, well, let's go ahead and just Alt shift down arrow on that as well. We'll keep some of this. VW, uh, we want, don't, don't want the font size. Let's make the width 50 VW. And we'll save that. Now notice that the width is slightly larger than the percent box above it. The available width within the percent container is counting padding and margin, so it has less to work with. VW doesn't care about padding and margin. Let's look at the dev tools again and we can see this. So if we look at percent, you'll see that there is padding around it, and so that is taking away from its available width. If we include some resets, let's see what happens. Let's take the padding and margin away from everything. And now you'll see that they are the same width. Another way to think about this is as a grid. So think of the browser being broken down into a 100 by 100 grid. One VW would be one cell width of the grid. Now VH is exactly the same as VW. It's just the viewport height instead. So on this VW we can add a height and we'll make it 30 VH. And now you'll see the height of the box has changed to 30% of the entire viewport height. And if we resize the browser, you'll see that it changes. So relative units are crucial in making a website responsive. 
If we made the box 100 VH, then we can make a full page section that is exactly the viewport height. And we could do something silly like change the width to VH and the height to VW. And then we would really confuse people. But we won't do that. Now let's look at rem and m. These are the ones that I get the most questions about. How do I use them? When do I use them? Well, these are relative to a font size. The R in rem stands for root. So rem is based on the root or HTML font size. Again, the default font size in most browsers is 16 pixels. So one rem would be equal to 16 pixels. Two rem would be equal to 32 pixels. So it's a multiplier. So let's get rid of these. We'll leave the absolute value there, the pixels, and we'll just change this to rim. And let's create a rim here. We'll add that border as well. And let's set the font size here to one rim. And let's open up the dev tools. And if we go down here to font size, you'll see that it is actually 16 pixels. And if I change this to two, We'll save it, and now it is 32 pixels. Now if I go up here and we change the default HTML font size, let's set it to 10 pixels. Now since this one is set to two rem, this should be 20 pixels. And there it is, 20 pixels. So fairly easy. Just remember that rem is based on the root or HTML font size. I'm gonna remove that, set it back to the default, now M is just like rim, but it's relative to the font size of its parent. There are use cases for M, but I try to use rim mostly. I'm gonna show you why M is not always the best choice. So let's go down here and I'm gonna create another div here with the class of M, and then let's create a UL, uh, LI, and then some lorem, and then let's, let's do a little bit of nesting here. Within this UL, we want another UL. And then within this one, we'll add another one. And now let me close the dev tools. So that's pretty normal right there. Let's go in here and set some styles. So let's say UL, and let's set the font size here to uh, one EM. So now you're not going to see a change at all. It's going to be set to the font size of its parent and its parent is the body. So that's gonna be 16 pixels. Now, if we change this to two EM, notice what happens. It gets a little crazy. So the first one is going to be two EM. So it's going to be 32 pixels. The next one though is nested within this one. So it's based on the first UL's font size, which is 32 pixels. So it's gonna double that. And the next one is gonna double again. So here you see how it's exponentially multiplying each nested element that's set to EM. And this can get very out of hand. All right, let's get rid of this and all of this. So now I wanna show you why you should use RIM. RIM is UX and accessibility friendly. So let's set this back to one RIM and we'll save it. So now we have our pixels set to 20 pixels and our rim is set to one rim. So the reason why this is accessibility friendly, if the user goes into their settings, and if they change their font size from medium to very large, watch what happens. Our paragraph that has rim defined as its font size adjusts with the user preferences, but our paragraph that is defined by pixels does not. So if we change this to very small, you'll see that it adjusts as well. So we'll go back to medium. Now, another thing to take note of is if you change the default font size on the HTML element, let's, watch, let's see what happens. Font size, let's change the default to 20 pixels. And now if we go back to our settings and we change this, go to very small, you'll see that our user settings are not going to affect any of it now because we have set a custom font size. So in order for the user to be able to adjust accessibility settings, we cannot set the default font size in pixels. If we want the default font size to be 
1.5 rem. And we'll save that. And now let's see if it works. And now if we change it to very small, now it works. So anytime that we're defining font size, I would recommend using rem. Now the user preferences will affect M as well, but just be careful when using M when it's nested within other elements to avoid that exponential multiplying issue. So another great use of rem is in padding and margin. So here in, in the rem class, we're gonna set the padding here to one rem, and we'll hit save. And you'll see that looks pretty good. And let's go back to our settings, and let's change the font size here. Let's go uh, very small. And you'll see that the padding still looks good. And we'll go very large. The padding increases accordingly. On our pixel class, if we add padding here as well, let's say 20 pixels, and we'll save that. And then let's set our font size here to one rem. So now let's see what happens when we change our font size in our settings. Let's go very small. See that there's a little bit too much padding here now, but it looks good on this one. If we go very large, there's not enough padding. The bottom one looks good. So use rim on font size, padding, and margin for accessibility and for responsiveness. So I hope this video has helped you better understand CSS units of measurement. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. Well, that's going to be it for this video. If you made it to the end, thanks for watching. But before you go, if you liked this video, a thumbs up is appreciated. I upload new content every week, so hit subscribe and the bell to get notified. If my videos have helped you in any way and you have the means to do so, support me on Patreon. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram at CodeStacker. Thanks for watching.